Good morning, adventurers. My name is Ben, and welcome to a morning show where I sit around, drink some tea, and talk about D&D. Mm. So first up for T&D, I have my You're the Greatest mug that several of my uh, home game party members got me. Uh, thanks, guys. They like they wanted me specifically to shout out every single time that I use it. They wanted me to shout them out every single time that I use it. There we go. That's the sentence I was trying to say. Um, so there you go. And inside of it, we have some Tension Tamer from Celestial Seasonings. Um, I did, I went to three, three, three different jobs today. Uh, so I'm a little, my head is, hurts a little bit, but that's all right. Um, you know, we make it through. Um, not the point. Today, we are talking about, uh, or we are, we are covering something that was a, uh, suggestion from one of my patrons and a suggestion that my patrons voted on. Um, if you are unaware, uh, in sort of the revamp of my Patreon, I have uh, decided that we one of the things that I'm going to do is start making suggestion boxes so that people can go ahead and just drop suggestions for episodes that they want to see out of this show. Um, and then every week, uh, people are going to be able to vote on it. Um, unfortunately, this last week, it was not brought to my attention until... Uh, you know, like yesterday, that uh, the suggestion box just never posted. So we are going to be starting again and on the upcoming Monday. Um, but that's okay, because actually this week was a tie. So next week, Friday, we will have a different episode um, of this same thing with the other one that tied this for first place. But getting into what we are actually talking about today, um, if you're interested in being part of that whole process, go over to my Patreon. The link is in the description of this episode. What we're actually talking about today, building a collaborative table, getting rid of that player versus DM mentality that so often is the butt of many a joke on the internet with regard to uh, Dungeons and Dragons as a whole. So let's talk about it uh, because there is a short answer and there is a long answer. And I'm going to give you guys both of them, I think. So, the short answer for how to get rid of that mentality is, uh, really can be boiled down to four simple words, that is, have a, oh, have a session zero. That will solve the majority of your problems right there. Those four words, ha that will solve the vast majority of your problems right there. Have a session zero. Uh, if you are unaware of what a session zero is, I highly recommend you looking it up for a little bit more information on it, but I will give you a sort of stripped down, quick version of what a session zero is right here, right now. Session zero is the session that you have uh, with the entire table, with the entire table, before anybody even sits down to play the game for the first time. Um, you, it is the collection of the dungeon master and the players. It is where everybody sits down. They talk, they tell you, or they tell each other about um, what they're hoping for out of the game, the types of things they want to see in the game, um, what they absolutely do not want to see in the game. This is also where it, if you are utilizing, which I highly recommend you do utilize, again, we're working on building a collaborative table here, uh, uh, TTRPG consent checklist. This is where those come out uh, and are filled out so that the DM has all of the information. Again, highly recommend using those. They actually do save a lot of headache in the future as a DM if you're trying to like plan something but you don't really know where people's lines are. Having those, you know exactly where lines are and they are open to be updated as you go forward. Um, so have a session zero. It is, it is the space where everybody sits down and talks together. They, they just communicate their needs, hopes, desires, and wants, the things that they need to not see in order to have a good time. Session zero is a magical, magical time that you, from like an outside perspective, when you're looking at a game, if you have never played like a long-term TTRPG before, you look at it and you go, well, that's silly. Why would we do that? I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, it will make your game better. It will make the game experience better if you have a session zero. Um, by nature of what it is, it is the laying of the groundwork for the trust at the table. Because the way to build a more collaborative table, uh, in addition, or er, not in addition, at the root of it is building a trusting relationship between the DM and the players. That is really what you have to do. Because you're trying not to get a combative relationship, you're trying to get a collaborative relationship. Which is tricky, um, because 
essentially what you have to sit down and do is say, I love you, I care about you, I care about the story we're telling, and I care about the player or the characters that you are playing. Now I'm going to try and murder you and wreck you emotionally. That's that's kind of D&D right there, baby. That's the whole thing. Um, not really. They, you can do you can do plenty of D&D without necessarily the murder and emotional destruction. But it's a cathartic thing for a lot of people. And that is it, it does feed into the roleplay aspect because if you are playing a role and you are into it, uh, you do feel a lot of very real emotions with these characters. And so uh, you, there has to be a, a baseline of trust there uh, that can begin to be established in that session zero. Um, actually, one of my players uh, texted our our D and D group chat the other day, and she said, "Why is it so hard to roleplay with uh, new people?" And uh, that that there's your answer. I know that you're watching this episode. Um, you you watch every episode, which I very much appreciate. Thank you very much. Um, but th there's your answer. It is because you don't have the baseline comfort and trust with the other people at the table already. So if you are playing with a group of strangers or a group of people you don't particularly know well, there is that barrier. Unless you are somebody who is very comfortable in just diving into a role, there's going to be that barrier there unless you get to know the people ahead of time. Uh, it's, it's like any other social relationship. It, it is rooted in comfort, and the lack of comfort is going to have you putting up a lot of walls that maybe you don't necessarily intend to have up. So, have a session zero to begin building that trust, because that trust is the thing that is going to make it be a collaborative environment. Now, you might be asking, well, I don't have a group of friends that want to play D&D. &D. Um, first off, uh, you're probably wrong. You can probably con several of your friends into playing D&D, &D, having them fall in love with it, and then make that a regular gaming group. You probably haven't tried hard enough to do that. But in the event that you have, here is a couple of recommendations for you. Um, find uh, games online. Find games in person at like local game stores or something like that. They are often good for helping uh, particularly new players get involved uh, and everything like that. And they are a great place to start building that uh, foundation with your um, characters and your knowledge. The other, uh, the other thing here is that if you can't find a group of people that you are automatically comfortable with, you're going to have a little bit more of a reserved approach to this game in terms of a collaborative effort with your dungeon master, because there is going to be that like weird social gate that you have to get across or get through. You don't go across gates, you go through gates um, before you can really sit down and start to build something with this other person, because that is the reality of what the indie really kind of is. So, uh, DMs, in order to try and negate this uh, mentality a little bit, host a session zero, first off. Second, be involved in your player's character creation. That's important. Like, be be involved. Essentially, the, the way that I found it works best is to have backstory drafts, essentially, that go through you. Um, have them write up, like, and I might do a longer video on this process at some point here, um, but have them write up like a paragraph or a couple sentences of backstory, send it to you. Then you give the players some details from the world you have begun to build, and they and then you send it back to them. Then they fill in more details that they want to see, send it back to you. You then get some of the stuff that they want in there, so you can put it, inject it directly into your world, and then you send it back to them with some further details, and then they can like flesh out and write out their backstory and then deliver you the final product. That is a really, really good way to make sure that there is trust built there. You are have shown that you are invested in the character at that point, invested in their stake in the world, because that is another big thing that you have to deal with. Uh, you've built up a collaborative process at that point already, um, which is something that not necessarily a lot of people do ahead of game time. And uh, you have started to build that social relationship if it isn't already there. <clears throat> Plus, you also then intimately know the character, and uh, you you have some amount of love and care for them automatically, which is good. Uh, that that's an important thing to have love and care for your player your, for your players' characters, whether or not you are playing them, obviously. <clears throat> In addition to that, uh, you are definitely, 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 definitely going to want to. 
<clears throat> demonstrate that you are on their side on a couple of different occasions early on in particular there is obviously sort of the stand the understanding the standing understanding that um dms can't track all of your players all of the player abilities there's no way that dms can keep a bunch of different character sheets plus monster stat blocks plus world lore plus everything else in their heads at the same time in active memory there's no reason for that but but in particular if you have players that are forgetting some of their um features that their classes bring for them or their race brings for them or anything like that help them out help them out just a little bit show them that you're on their side if you have a fighter who keeps forgetting that they have action surge or forgetting that they have second win just be like hey don't forget you have the ability to do this thing uh if your druid keeps uh I don't know, forgetting that they're concentrating on a spell and trying to concentrate on another one. Be like, hey, just so you know, that will drop concentration on this other spell. Like, glaringly obvious things that for some reason they are overlooking, voice those things. That will help sort of cement in their brain that, one, they don't know their character sheet as well as they should, and that they're going to need to spend some time figuring it out. And two, that you are on their side. Don't do it in such a way that makes them think that you are going to hold their hand through everything, because obviously you can't do that. Uh, particularly if you get to a higher uh, level at some point, it's just not going to happen. Um, but it does help sort of facilitate that relationship to be built because you are proving to them that even though you are operating the monsters that are trying to kill them, you are still on their side and trying to make sure they have the best fighting shot that they have or that they can have. So do a little bit of that because it's going to be helpful. Um, that works especially well with new players because uh, new players ha haven't necessarily had a lot of time playing collaborative games all the time. Because collaborative games are a lot less common than competitive games uh, in terms of like board games, video games, that kind of thing. Just because they are, frankly, harder to create. They are harder to facilitate because it is not necessarily something that is going to be the most universally applicable it's easy to understand that i have to beat that person it's way harder to understand i have to beat the, the game um as a whole so uh, combative games are a lot more commonplace and so new newer players will appreciate being reminded of these things um in addition to all of that i would recommend ramping up difficulty slowly for your new players or your low level characters just so that the, there is the understanding that you're not coming out swinging with these crazy monsters that will kill them immediately like if you show them that you are willing to do some damage to them but you are not going to just brutalize them for no discernible reason you're gonna build trust there just by nature of that because it is it is fun to be pushed to the edge of that uh sort of line in the sand of like oh my god the dm is about to kill my character that is actually kind of fun because then when you win, you feel good about it. Um, and at those low levels, you ha the players haven't necessarily invested in their character more than the, the energy that they've put into it at this point. They haven't sat with it and lived with it for long enough to have formed like a deep, deep emotional connection to them. It doesn't take that many sessions, but like if you kill someone in session two, they're going to be like, oh, okay, I guess my player's dead or I guess my character's dead now. Oh, well, um, and so it is It is one of those things where ramping difficulty up as you go is going to help you sort of play into that bond, that basis of trust and collaboration. Um, and finally, the, the last big thing here, as a DM, get, most of these things are kind of DM focused, but as a player, uh, you can sort of reverse engineer a couple of these. Um, so as a, as a DM look for feedback look for suggestions from your players look for things that your players want to see want to have happen as the game evolves as the game is being played because anybody can tell you a bunch of stuff like four months before the game starts and then you write it down and you're like okay i'm gonna do this and then like you get to game time and they go you yeah, know i don't i don't really know that i want to do that anymore i actually want to do this other thing and you go "Ooh, too bad i already wrote this bummer and then that's it that's the end of it um you don't want that to be what happens obviously there that sucks that just sucks you don't want that um so be open to feedback and players be ready to give your dm feedback give them ideas give them uh stuff 
stuff. Give them stuff. I was going to try and come up with a better word, but stuff is the right word. This is a collaborative game about collaborative storytelling, telling fake stories about fake people that have real impacts on real people's emotions. And that's just the way it goes. DM is fun. Or DM. D&D is fun, but it will hurt you on the inside if, uh, it, it, if, it, if it's done right sometimes and if it's done wrong. So be careful, but build that collaborative relationship. Um, build the trust. Have the session zero. Have uh, everybody be involved in helping create the world. Uh, look for feedback. Look for new ideas. Um, ramp up your difficulty. Help your players out. Help your DM out if there is something that you notice that they are forgetting or something like that and they seem kind of flustered. Help each other out. Um, you will... If you're looking to build a collaborative table and you bring that energy to the table, you are more than likely going to find a collaborative table on the other side of that, just because people will match energy a lot of the time. And so if you put forth the effort, other people are going to step up and put forth the effort too. If you know somebody's not, maybe it's time for, you know, a, a little intervention with them. Be like, or I say intervention. That's a very strong way to put that. Just like a quick chat. Be like, hey, we're trying to do this thing. You cool? You cool? Cool. Um, and if they're not, then maybe it's not the right table for them. Maybe they want to play a more war gamey kind of thing. War gamey kind of thing is what I was trying to say. Uh, and you're trying to play a, a big like fantasy story time kind of thing. And that's okay. But that's what session zero is for. Have session zero. You would have gotten that figured out early on if you had had the session zero. There we go. So again, short answer. Have a session zero. Long answer. Everything else I just said. <laughs> Um, so that is everything I had to talk to you guys about today on that one. Um, moving on to what shows we have for today and this weekend, because it is Friday, so we got quite a bit going on here. Uh, to start off Friday, today, we have Mayhem D&D, Off the Rails, Ox Venture, Just Roll With It, The Strings of Fate, Rolling With Difficulty, World of Low, and The Crowned DM. Saturday, we have a very short list of Dice Funk and Strange Hungers. And then Sunday, we have Super Idols, Roll for Your Life, Grinning Griffin, Dungeon Drunks, Library of Nightmares, The Chaos Brigade, Rise of the Forsaken, Chromatic Dice, The Strodcast, and High Rollers. Whew. That's a lot of shows. Check them out. Let them know that I sent you. Have a good time uh, adding a little bit more D&D to your weekend. And if you get to play, good for you. I really wish that I got to play this weekend, but that's okay. Uh, you, can't, you can't always get what you want. Um... Anyway, highly recommend checking out some shows. Let them know that I sent you. Uh, and let me know what you think of them. Because, hey, oh, hey, why not? Hey, hey, why not? Um, but that is everything I have to talk to you guys about today. Thank you so much uh, for making me part of your morning routine. And thank you so much in particular to my patrons. You guys are the, one that make this show, are the ones that make this show possible. You even inspired this episode entirely. So thank you for that. Uh, this has been a sort of like fan, e fan episode. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Um, it's a patron voted on episode. If you want to be involved in that voting process, go check out my Patreon. There's a link to it in the description of this episode. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's everything. Uh, I, my brain's kind of all over the place right now because I started talking very, very fast for a little bit there. Um, but that's not the point. The point is that you guys really shouldn't forget to drink tea, play D&D, &D, and keep on rolling. <laughs>